Greetings everyone, this is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California. If you're interested in what's happening at City Hall, among other things, or just want to keep track of what our local politicians are up to, welcome to the channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when future videos are uploaded. Ouch! That hurts! This is a brief overview of what is on the agenda for the November 19th, 2019 regular meeting agenda. Closed session begins at 6 p.m. Open session begins at 7 p.m. in the City Council Chambers on C Street. Closed session items include performance evaluations for the City Manager and City Attorney, and a discussion of labor negotiations with all unrepresented city employees. There are several awards, presentations, or proclamations this evening. Presentation of colors by the Explorer Post, invocations, recognition of the Explorer Post, presentation of a $1,000 scholarship, Introduction of a new police dispatcher, introduction of a new police sergeant, and the swearing in of the new sergeant and dispatcher. Then we have announcements and reports from council and staff. The public hearing is about the Padilla Auto Sales Project planned for Campbell Boulevard. You can see the proposed layout and location in the photos below. Citizen comments is when you can talk about or ask questions about anything that is not already listed on the agenda. You will be asked to give your name and address for the record. If you're concerned about your home address becoming a part of the forever digital world, I would suggest using something vague like your name and Livingston, California or your P.O. Box. Notice the items on the consent agenda. Usually the council will vote on them as one group unless one of the members of the council wants to pull it for a separate discussion. Items on the consent agenda are listed on the agenda, so you have the right to make comments or ask questions on any one of these items, and you don't need to use up your citizen comment time to do so. You might have to stick your hand up in the air and state you have a question about something on the consent agenda. For example, I have a question about the conflict of interest code. But since it is something listed on the agenda, the mayor should allow you the time to ask. This is an excerpt from the November 5th, 2019 meeting minutes, and it gives an example of how meeting minutes keep track of when council members arrive late, step out for a few minutes, or leave the meeting entirely. Some meetings do go quite long, and it is understandable if a member of the council might need to slip out for a quick break or to leave due to a work conflict or sudden family emergency. This record does not state the reason why the mayor pro tem left the meeting early that evening. We may or may not learn the actual reason during his next report on the 19th. This is a perfect example of something on the consent calendar that triggers a question. The staff report states that the conflict of interest code was adopted in 2009. However, when I go to the city code online and type in conflict of interest, the only thing that pops up is in reference to the planning commission. So that's something I would want to follow up on at the next meeting. This is an item on the consent calendar that I would have expected to have been a separate discussion item. In the more recent past, surplus items were sent to an auction house specifically to avoid any allegations of impropriety. However, in this case, the police chief wishes to donate at least one of the vehicles to the Livingston High School shop class 
or donate some to charities instead of just getting pennies on the dollar from an auction house. This is just the second reading of the decision made on November 5th to rezone some property from downtown commercial to limited industrial. Next up on the agenda are discussion and potential action items. There is a compliance report about facility inspections, a contract to fix a sewer lift station, arsenic removal at well number 16, and a big settlement of a lawsuit by a developer. This is about inspections of schools, hotels, and apartments. This is about repairing a sewer lift station. See where the red arrow is pointing? That is the location of well number 16. According to my information, this has been the most expensive well to run due to its high concentrations of arsenic and just how expensive it is to filter out the arsenic to meet drinking water standards. In the beginning, it was a backup well. But over time, as the city and the demand for water grew, well number 16 became a main producing well. The city is looking to do a centralized treatment project for well number 16 and its neighbor, well number 14, in the future, and will be receiving funds from the state. However, the city will have to front the money for this item until the state funds come in. This item is about some litigation that has been going on for quite a while. The way I understand is, is the original developer went belly up and nothing happened for a long time. Then a new developer bought out the project and wanted the same fee arrangements as the old developer. There is a question as to whether or not the new developer is really legally entitled to that fee arrangement since so much time had passed. The decision must have been made that the city would lose more by continuing the litigation than it would gain by maybe winning the case. If you add up the dollars in the fiscal impact section of the staff report, it comes to 500208 That number does not include the court fees and lawyers fees paid during the process. After going through this agenda, I'm left with a few questions. You might have some of your own. Some of mine are in no particular order. Is that $500,000 settlement going to be paid out in one lump sum or in monthly installments? How much will other departments have to cut their budgets because of the $350,000 part coming out of the general fund? And that $36,864 park in lieu fees, what exactly would that have been used for? And how much will the loss of water connection fees affect future water rates, if at all? And how long until the conflict of interest code is included in the city's online municipal code? So what do you think? This is one of the longer videos I've done about a council agenda. If you have stuck with me this far, thank you. I really appreciate it. Please like, share, and leave a comment in the comment section under this video. YouTube keeps messing around with its algorithm and every time it does, smaller channels like mine get put at a disadvantage. Your likes, shares, and comments help you tell YouTube that channels like this one have value and deserve a space on the platform. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. And if you're already subscribed, thank you. You might want to check that you're still subscribed. If you haven't left a like or a comment lately, the algorithm just might decide you're a bot or a sock account and unsubscribe you. It's a pain to keep talking about this, but that's just how it is nowadays on YouTube. You also might want to check out some of the links in the description below this video. I am including a link to the most recent Utility Rate Stakeholders Committee meetings in the video description below this video. 
you might want to take a look at them in preparation for the next Proposition 218 hearing that's on the horizon. I am also including the contact information for the city manager and city council members just in case you want to contact them directly.